Hey guys, welcome back to an all new Cinema 4D tutorial. It's been some time since I have put one together, so I thought we could do one on Espresso, but more specifically, the iteration node. Now, what does the word iteration mean? I'm sure that some of you have probably heard that word or seen the node itself. Well, the word iteration just means to cycle through something over and over again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can use that to optimize and make our Espresso more efficient. So let's jump right into this and get started. So we're just going to keep this really simple. There's no need to get crazy with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to duplicate this cube throughout the scene because I want to have a lot of copies of this cube. So I'm just going to control click and drag just to make a bunch of copies. All right, I think maybe just a couple more. All right, so there's our, our cubes. Now you can see we've got quite a bit of cubes over here. I think we have a total of 35 of them. Actually, uh, zero counts as one, so this will be one, so it's actually 36. So we have quite a few of these cubes, and let's say that what we wanna do is we want to be able to keyframe the visibility of these cubes going on and off. So in order to do that, and I'll just select the first cube here just to show you, uh, we'll go over to the basic tab and we have visible in editor and visible in render. So all you have to do is just set this from default to either on or off. If you set it to on, you can see the green light comes on. And if we set it to off, the red light comes on. So this is the parameter here that we would need to keyframe. However, we have a lot of cubes in this scene. So that means that we would have to make a keyframe for each one. What we could do though, is we could select all of these cubes and then we can make a keyframe for it. And then that keyframe would be set for all the cubes we have selected. But what if you don't want them all to go on and off at the same time? that could cause a bit of an issue because then you're stuck with having to make keyframes for each group that you want on and off. Or what we could do is select them all and group them in a null and then just keyframe the visibility for the null object. But of course that would be too simple. So maybe your scene file isn't going to be that simple. Maybe it's going to be a little more complicated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take some of these and I'm gonna group them in some nulls Okay, so now we have each of these cubes and they're grouped into different nulls here. And just for this tutorial, let's say that we want to keyframe the visibility of some of these cubes, but not all of them. So in order to do that, we'd have to go in and select the cubes that we want and then keyframe their visibility on and off, on and off, wherever we want them to be on and off along the timeline. And of course, that can be a little tedious depending on how many of these you want to keyframe. So the next solution would be to make your own user data controller. So I'm just going to select this first, uh, this bottom null here and create an Espresso tag for it. And we'll click on that, go over here to user data, add user data. And what I want to do is I just want to build a quick a switch to click on and off for the visibility. So we're just going to name this here to on, off, and the data type we're going to set to Boolean. And you can see it just gives us a little clickable Boolean switch here. So we'll drag the null over into the Espresso window. For the output, we want to use the user data on off. And here's where the iteration node comes into play. Let's say that we wanted these four cubes right here, along with others, but I'm just gonna use these four here, uh, just for the example. I wanna take these four cubes and drag them in. So what we wanna do is we want to enable, I'm just gonna use visible and editor. 
we have to do this visible in editor. And we have to do this for each one of these cubes. And let's say that we want to throw in some more cubes. So let's select these cubes here. Maybe some from here. These are the ones that we want to control. Now look at all of these different cubes here, these cube nodes that I have, and I'm going to have to go through them one by one and find the input port for visible and editor. And then I'm going to have to connect all of these together. Now, once they're all connected, it makes it easy because all I have to do is keyframe the switch. But the problem is that there are so many of these that have to be connected and hooked up. And eventually your Expresso window is going to be very cluttered. And you're going to have a lot of different nodes sitting around. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to go find the iteration node. Okay, there's the iteration node. And the iteration node is going to cycle through something over and over again. And what we want to do is we want to tell it to cycle through a list. So I'm going to right click new node and I need to look for the link list. Okay. Now the link list gives you a box over here and this is where you're going to put all of your objects at that you want to be controlled or that you want this iteration node to cycle through. So let's just randomly pick out some of these cubes. And what I'll do is I'm going to click on the link list and I'm going to lock the window. And I'm going to use the little arrow selector over here. I'm going to go through and select those. And let's select some of these cubes through here and maybe some of those. Okay, so you can see here we've selected the cubes that we want to control. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to tell the iteration node, because you can see we can, if you click on it, it says start and end. And by default, it's set to zero for both of those parameters. So what we want to do is we want to tell it how many objects is it going to be iterating through. So if you click on the link list, we can count these. So we've got, let's see if we select them all, I wonder if it'll give the number up here. No, it won't. Okay. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Now we have 14 objects there. However, 0 counts as 1. So even though we have 14 objects, it's actually 13 because you actually start with 0. 0 counts as 1. So this is actually 13 and not 14 according to the way this is calculated. So back over to the iteration node, and we're going to start at 0, and the iteration is going to end at 13. And the data type can just be left where that's at. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to take one of the cubes that's in the link list and drag it in. So just be sure that you're selecting the right uh, object that's in your link list. So it could be any one of these. I have a habit of grabbing the first one. It doesn't have to be, it could be any one of these cubes, but I'm just going to go for cube 26. So here's cube 26, and I'm just going to drag that in. Now this is the cube that we need to enable the input port for visible in editor. Now we can hook up the iteration node to the link list. And then from the link list, we can go over here to object. And then the on off switch can go over here to visible in editor. And notice instantly when we connect this up, all of these have now turned green. So let's test this out and see how this works. Click here and get up our user data. Here's the controller. And on and off turns off the cubes that we selected. Now remember, we didn't put all the cubes in the link list. So that's why only some of them are going on and off. All right, so just to go over this one more time, what we're doing here is rather than dragging all 13 or 14 of those cubes into the Expresso window editor and hooking them up manually one by one, which can be extremely tedious, what we've done is we put them all into a list. 
and we told the iteration node to cycle through that list over and over again. And then the controller here controls the visibility in the editor, which in turn also controls everything in the linked list because the iteration node cycles through it extremely fast. You just can't see it doing it, but it does it very quickly. So that's how the iteration node works, and you can use it for many different things. It doesn't have to be for the visibility. You can use it for any other parameter. Uh, of course, you'd have to make sure that your switch is set correctly. Uh, for example, if you want to take this cube and you want to do something like maybe the position or the rotation, well, then you need to make sure that your user data controller is set up properly to actually control that. Because right now, we just have a a very simple on-off switch that's not really going to control rotation or position. All right, so that's the iteration node and how it works. And you can see that it saves you a lot of time and your Espresso editor window looks a lot better. And we didn't have to spend all the time hooking up all of these connections between all the various ports on all of those cubes that we originally dragged in here. So I think that about wraps it up for the iteration node. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll try to answer all of them that I can. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.